part eight of my building the chaperone. I've made a lot of progress. I think it's starting to look amazing in, in my opinion. This piece is not glued down yet, it's just sitting here. So it'll take a little application of pressure to put it into place. But I've had a lot of success. I had mentioned that I would copper some of the, the metal things that I think might be metal. And that is done, turned out, I think, amazing. And uh, I'll give you some close-ups of that. I'm very happy with the build. Uh, there's been a couple issues, uh, a couple things that might have been my fault. I discovered one that might be in the engineering of the unit itself and has to do the, with the, uh, the smokestacks going down in, in this area. There was a, a beam that just kind of ran into it and I could actually see on the plans where that's there. Well, that, that just won't work. So I had to cut it out of the place. So that'll be featured today. Let me give you a, a flyover that I do sometimes and show you what I mean about that copper plating that I did and the aged copper look that is in place. You can see my workplace. I don't have a lot of space. It's just a little cubby in my garage. Thankfully, my garage is heated in the winter and semi-cooled in the summer so I can work out here pretty easily. Let me get into the details how I got to this point. I made an error in this part right here. These are the skylight windows. It's difficult to tell, but there is a slight overhang so that these windows have something to glue to on the, the back side. This piece just overhangs a little bit. Unfortunately, I put it flush with the underneath side of this. So this panel here, I had it flush with the bottom and it was sticking up and it needs to be just the opposite of that so that these windows are flush with the top of this panel right here. Here it is finished. So this is now flush here and there's a real slight edge there. But when the window gets, goes in, you can slightly see the frame. I will set this aside until I'm ready to put it on the ship. I ran into what I thought was a problem and see this brace here and the one here, that's where the smokestack goes down and those are in the way. I thought it was my error, but looking at these plans, it shows it right there. So I don't think it's my error. What I've had to do is I've just cut those off so I can get that smokestack to go straight down through there. That was kind of an interesting revelation. I did not make this bending jig. It may come in handy for you if you're interested in that. It's to aid, I think, in bending this back portion and getting the correct curvature. I was able to do it without the jig, so I'm good. There are two small smokestacks here at the back of the ship and this little outbuilding. One of the more challenging parts of this model is, as an example, here's this little chicken coop and all these parts we're on this placard through here, and you can see everything is here except for 111D, and that's just the little door that sticks on the front right there, but it's not on this placard, so I have to search through all the placards trying to find this tiny little door. I should have known and remembered that all the doors and windows are on these very, very thin wood sheets and 111D is right here. It shows the length of these stacks and a cover for the stack, but it doesn't specifically say what that cover is made out of. So I took a little bit larger dowel and I kind of made it cone shaped, glued it on here. And to make that, again, I go back to one of my favorite tools and it's this very small belt sander and I, I don't cut out the cone shape yet until after I sand it into a cone shape. I may fine tune this a little off camera because you want the the point to be pretty much centered. That's pretty close. And then you can decide how much of a slant you want. I think I want to get a little more of a slant. Once you get it to the cone shape that you want, you can just cut it off. 
I want just a little edge to it. And I cut just until it's about to pop off and then I stop because I don't want it flying clear across the room. And I can just peel that off. Take my smaller dowel, I'll cut it to length and then I will attach that, uh, let me set it this way, and it'll come out looking something like that. Here they are, they're not completely finished. The height isn't uh, set necessarily correctly and obviously I have to do some paint work. I think I will also cover these with copper and then age the copper. Something that I did that the instructions don't show or don't call for is this is gonna be the area of the skylights and it had this just left solid. I've gone, I've cut this out. So the actual skylights, that which, will, which will sit up here, which here's the beginning of the skylights. These windows will be all around. Like so. Now let me set them to the sides. Here's the skylights just set down. They'll be glued on here. This will be placed like so, just slightly above this deck. This will also be the flat black. I went with maroon on the skylight windows. But to me, that just seemed more realistic to open this up. Early on, I may have misstated some of the names of the deck. I think this is the main deck at the bottom or lower deck. This with the doors is the boiler deck. This is the hurricane deck. So lately I've been working on the hurricane deck. I've painted it a flat black. In reality, the ship would have had a felt and tar uh, sealer on it. And you can see I have all these containers holding it down. You wanna maintain the little bit of the arch that the ship has. So that's the reason for the weight, especially here in the center. These are the smokestacks I've been working on and this is now glued in place and to help it get in exactly the right place, I did put the, the main smokestacks in place because they lined up with the lower decks. So now I know that's okay, I can take these back out, hopefully. And as I had mentioned before, these have been uh, coated in copper and I'm gonna age them. That will be very soon, so stay tuned. That's why I need to take them out of here. Now they are gonna get scratched up a little bit because I put them in there. I will just go ahead and put another coating of copper on that before I age it. I'm going to do that with copper on anything that I think is metal. So all of these smokestacks are gonna be uh, covered in copper and then aged. And this I think they called a chicken coop. So I think it faces that way. Anyway, let me get to work on that. Let me get the ones that I want. And once I get all the things made that I want to do that to, I'll show you how I age the copper. Every once in a while I get lucky and these little clips just happen to fit all the way around that and are holding that skylight window down, both down and outward slightly. I'm pretty happy with that. It will set on here. Approximately like that, if you can imagine it being lowered down all the way to the to the uh, ship. The glue is set up, you know, within, it sets up fairly quickly, but it's probably been 15 minutes. So I was able to take those supports off and then I wanted to put it on top of the ship and have it really dry solid, getting that slight arch that I talked about that, you know, kind of bows the ship inward. I wanna make sure it follows that contour. And the windows, even though it didn't say they were different, they do have a contour to them. One of the ends kind of had a bow to it. So I uh, matched up as best I could uh, just by feel. And I think I got it on there pretty good. Here's the front. Still have this rubber band on the back. This back window was giving me a little trouble holding nice and straight, but I've got it. So it'll set up now. I've been experimenting making these 
king posts. I don't know how well you can see. It's this little post right here. There's a wire that goes up to support the smokestacks. I've tried a few different things. This is my favorite so far. This is my miniature lathe. And you can't really put this into the tip of that. It just doesn't work. So I took a little round dowel, drilled a hole in it the same diameter. And now I can hold this and then take a variety of things, a triangular file, different grades of, of sanding sticks, and I can make them. This will hold it steady. I can match them up, that's pretty close. Now I will cut to length. I made it a little bit long, it needs to be three inches. Well, I guess it is about three inches. So I'll make them the same length and put them in place. These are the king posts in place, not secured. I've got more work to do on them. The small rectangular here and the rectangulars here into the back are hog truss posts. The rest are kitchen exhausts, some exhaust pipes. All of these bare wood pieces I'm going to remove. I'm going to do the copper leaf and then I'm going to age that copper. The upper portion is not glued down yet, it's just sitting there. And I'm glad I took the roof out for the skylight because now you can look down in and you can actually see some of the lights. This will be the first time I've used this uh, Mona Lisa Speedball Metal Leaf Adhesive. I'm assuming it'll work just fine. On these pieces, this is the capstan, and you might be able to see under here, no, you probably can't, but there's a, a mold line. There was one on top. I just took file, filed that down. I'll use this little piece of wood so I can put the adhesive on that. This is the back side of painter's tape, so I wrapped it around so it's sticky, so it'll hold all those pieces so I can get the adhesive all around it. These two pieces I have done before, but I'm just gonna do them again. There were a couple of places where it didn't stick real well. I'll need to let that dry for about 30 minutes and then I can come back and put the copper on it. What I'm doing is making a loop Put the seam at the bottom, stretch this out, I moved the pieces over to the other tape, here's my copper leaf, I'm going to just try to slide it off, let it drape down on those, I'm going to start with a very soft brush and just try to encapsulate each one. These are the smallest things I've ever attempted this on. Now I'll bring these other pieces of copper, kind of press them into the sides where I can see it is not stuck. Getting a little stiffer brush so I can poke this down in some of the crevices. I'll let that dry a little bit, then I'll brush more off. And any place where it did not did not adhere, I can do another application of glue in those areas. Uh, I can also use a little uh, airbrushing with some dark paint after I finish aging them, so it'll cover up nicely. It'll be Now I'm just gonna recover all the little parts and let them dry a little bit, and then I'll brush all the loose copper off of them. Unfortunately, when I documented the earlier steps, I did not hit record properly on my camera, so it did not record. So I'm just going to give you a voiceover of what I did. I took some salt, mixed it with a little water, got it as salty as I could, put it in this misting spray bottle. Then I put some wax paper on my workbench, misted them, 
dry them off. You can either let them air dry or I used a heat gun just to speed it up a little bit. Not so much that it would melt anything because I held it back quite a ways, but I did use that to speed it up a little bit. Then I positioned all the pieces that have been uh, misted with salt water and then dried. It's important that you do let it dry and several mistings may be required because you want a, a little bit of a coating of, of salt on the copper. Then position them on these little boards that you see. They are raised up. There's some ceramic tile chunks underneath those. And then in the bottom is just some household ammonia. Then we've got the warming tray. It's on a low setting. I will put this lid on. And we're gonna let that set in there for about 45 minutes. If you choose to do something like this, just be aware that if you're using ammonia, you have got to be in a very well ventilated area. I'm in a garage, I can have the door open. I've got some ventilation systems in here. Just be aware of that. So it's been about 30 minutes. Some of these are already ready to come out. So I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna take them out and then I'll show them to you on a, a, a paper towel, the ones that I think are ready. If I can get them. So because I put it on this wood and it drilled in a hole, I have to be able to pull it out. The rest of these are not ready. The real small pieces have not turned, so I maybe did not get enough salt on them. We'll keep trying. You can see how natural this looks as far as being kind of grungy as these dry you'll start seeing some of the patina there'll be an aqua patina there's a little mark right there on that one you'll see more of it as as it dries i hope the color shows up on video as it as well as it is here in real life i don't think i could match this using paint and what i want it to look like i want it to look aged i want it to look like it's been out on the water and all this is oxidized. It's almost completely dry and now you can see the patina that's coming out and the natural darkness of it as opposed to using paint. I know this isn't for everyone, it's just my personal taste, but I really like the look of uh, aging copper. I left the real tiny parts inside the cooker overnight. I had turned the power off so it was just room temperature and they did age overnight, as you can see. Here are the other parts now that they're completely dry. Rustic look there. That's probably the part that I will have to the front of the ship right there. And I do like the aqua color that appears every once in a while. Starting aft of the ship, or the rear of the ship, I'm very happy with the copper plating that I did on this little uh, chicken hut and you can see that it, it actually almost looks like a rusty kind of color it has a little bit of the aqua to it the little smokestacks for uh, the kitchen area this, there's a you can see this line here on this that will be raised and the roof on that I'm going to do in copper there's a lot of copper roofing that is done in different uh, different historical ships so I'm going to do that in copper I know that's different than everyone else probably these two kind of like a, a flagpole top post have also had the copper leafing done everything is matching up pretty well I do like that I'm going to be able to look through these skylights and see some of the lighting it's going to be difficult as I knew to see what's actually in there but I know what's there and if you know if you tell somebody that you know right down in there if you look close there's a white grand piano can be seen from this side that completes part eight of my building the chaperone and as from time to time I do in the winter I'm going to take a two-week break I'm going to head down where it's sunny and warm and then I'll resume the build when I get back this is Boiler Dan 1 and as always thanks for watching